Do you remember when I built a Star Wars 8080 that I could ride on? It walked along okay, but it was very slow. Top speed was only around 60 meters per hour, which is only 0.02 miles per hour. I could probably have made it go twice as fast by moving two legs forward at a time instead of one, but that still isn't very fast. So now I'm going to start an ongoing development project to build a smaller, faster quadrupedal walking machine that I can ride on. It needs to go faster, be easier to transport, and I'd also want a number of other features like trying to walk on more varied terrain, but we'll see how that goes. The main speed limiting issue with the AT-80 was that I couldn't run all the motors at full speed all of the time. This was because I needed to make the feet follow a path where they moved backwards together in a straight line along the ground. To do this I calculated inverse kinematics at the foot position to get the knee and hip joint angles, then I used interpolation to plan the foot path, and fed those coordinates into the inverse kinematics. There's a lot more detail in the original video about the calculations if you want to check it out. But as the AT-80 only moved forward with one foot at a time, that foot went forward as fast as it could with the other three legs moving backwards, and the velocity of those three legs had to be around three times slower so there was time for each foot to take a step forward in turn. So that meant that we were actually moving forward four times slower than the maximum speed the feet could have moved. The AT-80 also had limited stride length, and that was because the legs could only bend so far. That meant in order to actually clear the ground with each step, there was a limit to how far it could reach. The AT-80s in the Star Wars movies actually have an extra axis to get more ground clearance, which gives the legs some extra reach, but that adds quite a lot of complication, especially with the way I had it turned by splitting its legs apart. So the up and down axis will be separate from what drives the forward and back axis, rather than trying to use a traditional knee and hip and working out the kinematics. So basically the foot will only move up and down on the leg, and then another bit of mechanics will slide the whole leg back and forth, all at the maximum motor speed. The 80-80 gear ratio seemed to be more than strong enough to carry me and the rest of the machine. I used 200 to 1 gear head motors to drive each half of the leg, which was built on parallelograms. The gears were 3D printed, with the larger ones being produced on a 1.2mm nozzle on Lulzbot printers, so they were pretty chunky and tough. The reduction was in two stages, a 4 to 1 from the motor to the larger part of the intermediate gear, and then a 5.7 to 1 from the smaller part of the intermediate gear to the large gear attached to one half of the parallelogram. That, along with a 100 to 1 gear head on the motor, meant we ended up with a 2280 to 1 reduction. I never actually measured the torque with any quantified testing, but I couldn't physically stop the joints moving with my body. No, I can't stop that. Let's just try it the other way. No, oh, I've got to kill it before it hits the end stop. And two of the legs could deadlift both me and the rest of the machine, including the other two legs with no problem. Now you may remember that I did some robot dog projects with cycloidal drives which work well. I also made a much larger 20 to 1 reduction cycloidal drive project which was intended for large projects. I did test this gearbox and I got 120 newton meters from it, but that only failed with more mass because the belt slipped on the motor driving it. Cycloidal drives are good because the cycloidal discs in them tend to be fairly tough and chunky compared to the smaller teeth we'd have on traditional gears. But they also require quite a lot of assembly for the cams, and any bearings that run on the output stage holes in the discs. Also, you can't easily get an output axle all the way through the gearbox because the cam in the middle rotates off centre, and it also goes 20 times faster in the opposite direction than the output. So that kind of leaves a flat hub on one side to attach the output to. For the new machine, I've had a much better idea. Planetary gearboxes are a commonly used alternative where multiple planet gears mesh with a sun gear in the middle. Matt Denton did a very good testing video on a 3D printed planetary gearbox recently. It's always the sun gear that breaks though because it's attached to the motor. Matt tried various materials for the sun gear and even ended up with some SLS metal parts, but that just shredded through the next gear stage in the end. And that is why I use cycloidal drives in the first place. But what if we can use the idea of a planetary gearbox where multiple teeth mesh across multiple gears at once, but turn the whole thing inside out, so the motors are on the outside and the sun gear is the output that drives the robot leg. This means I can mix together multiple motors, since those are around the outside, and have multiple intermediate two-stage gears to give us a high reduction with the load spread across many more teeth. If we wanted, we could keep adding motors and intermediate gears, but since the 8080 only needed two motors, we'll start with that. The new gearbox has a 3.18 to 1 reduction from the motor gears to the large part of the intermediate gears, and then a 6.1 reduction from the smaller part of the intermediate gears to the output gear. 
That, along with the 100 to 1 gearhead motors, gives us a 1908 to 1 reduction, which is similar to both the large cycloidal drive and the 8080 gear reductions. The three intermediate gears are actually different because I had to orient the small and big stages of them separately so that they actually mesh with the other gears, so I've printed those separately in three different colours. A big thanks to my 3D printing sponsor, which is Lulzbot 3D Printers, for supporting my channel with 3D printers. Lots of these parts are printed with a 1.2mm nozzle again, mainly the big body for the gearbox and the big gear that's actually going to drive the output. As well as the body for the gearbox, I've got another piece which is going to back that up and hold the axle eventually so it's cross-braced on multiple bearings and we don't get any skew in the output which is going to carry most of the torque. I printed all the gears in a fairly high density infill and I also used six perimeters. So we've got six perimeters and a 20% infill on all of those parts, so those should be really tough. I did consider if I should make holes all the way through these gears and then put metal rods in, perhaps some three or four millimeter steel bars to help strengthen that, but I've never really had any problems with gears or pulleys shearing off on that two stage seam and I've made some quite big machines which use two stage pulleys, albeit driven by belts, which were perfectly strong enough to carry me and make me balance. So all my gears are printed in Polymaker Polymax PLA, which is pretty tough stuff, including this gear, which was printed with a 1.2mm nozzle, so that should be super tough. And then the body for the gearbox is all Polylite Pro. So thanks to Polymaker for supporting the channel with 3D printing filaments. I'm using some 8mm steel bars to run those gears on, and those glue into the body, the main 3D print for that gearbox. Thanks to Simply Bearings for the bearings for this project. I've got some small bearings, some collar clamps, and of course big bearings to support a big axle to go through the whole thing. Later in the project I'll also be using some Lazy Susans. Because the 3D printed body of the gearbox is so big and took a while to print, I made a piece with a smaller nozzle that I can tolerance and only have to print that again if it doesn't fit the bearings properly. So that saves quite a lot of time. The rest of the gears are printed with a half millimetre nozzle, so those bearings fit just fine. I'm using the same motors as before, which are actually 99.5 to 1 gearhead motors from Gimson Robotics, and the front of that is the gearhead and there's a keyed shaft. And these of course are the same motors I use in the cycloidal drive testing and the 8080 project. But before we start to assemble some of that, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is PCBWay. PCBWay is a one-stop shop for PCB manufacturing, assembly, but also other types of manufacturing services, including contract manufacturing, all under the same roof. PCBWay's 3D printing services include SLS, SLA, DLP, FDM in a variety of materials including various resins, nylon, PLA, ABS, TPU, PEAK and more, and there are many variable prototype options for all the types of manufacturing. 3D printing surface finish options include gloss and matte spray painting, dyeing and even electroplating. PCBWay can also print custom materials by request. The CNC machining services include a wide variety of materials, including aluminium, stainless steel and various plastics. They can fit inserts and tap threads and provide a whole variety of surface finishes, including brushing, painting, powder coating, bead blasting, anodizing and detail sanding. And of course, PCBWay manufactures all sorts of printed circuit boards, including aluminium PCBs, flexible PCBs and rigid flex PCBs, which are part rigid and part flexible. Find out more now at PCBWay.com and I'll put that link in the description to this video. The motors are mounted right through the gearbox and then there's a 3D printed plate on the front there to mount them to the front. I put the gears on and these have a little grub screw and a captive nut and you'll notice there's a little hole cut out and that is to put a key in so it matches the keyway of the motor shaft and then we can tighten up that grub screw and that holds everything in place and this has been tough enough for all of the projects in the past. I'm using a couple of washers under each gear as a spacer just to hold those off the surface and then we can put those three gears on which are colour coded because they're all slightly different. The main output shaft is a piece of 4040 extrusion in a round hole so there's a shim that fits the square profile in the bearing and then we can put the main output gear on which has a square hole in it. And hopefully if I've got all the intermediate gears in the right place all of those teeth should align perfectly. So that's looking pretty good. So that's the basic gearbox assembly, but we've only really got this bit of 4040 
pushed into one bearing, so that's not going to be strong enough to test torque. Now I do have this piece that fits over there and also fits over the 8mm bars that these gears are on, but really we want to anchor this axle properly, and also I've got nothing to fix this to so that we can fix it down properly to test torque. So I'm going to build the rest of the assembly out with some more 4040, get this fitted, and then we'll have something proper to anchor some weights to. I'm using some more 4040 extrusion to build the rest of the structure for this, and this is going to be what the main robot is going to be built out of. So I've got some aluminium plates, and then we've got T-nuts that fit into the slots, and that allows us to bolt it together. So I've used these aluminium plates to make this sort of H structure with two bits of 4040, and that goes into the original gearbox block, and also this block, which was the other one that I printed earlier, and that means we've got two pieces here, which are basically square holes in bearings, so we can get that axle to go all the way through, and then it's double braced, and this is really rigid. So that is my axle that goes all the way through. I've got some metal brackets on one end. I'm going to attach some more 4040 to, and of course that square piece at the other end for the big gear. And that big gear also has another piece of 4040 extrusion bolted to it. That's also held on with some metal brackets, although I couldn't get any off the shelf ones with four holes. With a few more washers on top of those gears on those 8mm bars, then we can fit on the big piece that braces the axle with another bearing onto those bars that hold the gears, and that's going to hold everything tight so they don't just skew as we apply torque. So we can see we've got another bearing there and another shim for the square shaft. It's now time for those collar clamps on each of the 8mm bars, and those get tightened up nicely, and that is going to hold on that big red piece. That's most of the assembly with all of the gears now, so... There really is hardly any backlash in that, and I think most of it's probably in those gear head motors. I can see the intermediate gears back driving a little bit. Let's just give this a pull. Oh, yeah, I can back drive it, but... Oh, that's actually incredibly tough. So we should probably power it up and see um, how much torque we can put on it. I'm actually going to put another stick on the other side of the axle as well, attach the metal brackets make another H piece in here, so this is super strong as well, and that should be the whole assembly. Next to the cycloidal drive that I did the testing on previously is pretty much the same size, although of course either of them could be made smaller or bigger with different components and different bearings. I've added the other piece of 4040 extrusion on the other end of the axle with that metal bracket, and now we've got two crossbars. One of those is at 300mm, which is actually where the knee pivot is going to be in the machine, and the other one is at half a metre, which we're going to use for torque testing. This is going to take quite a lot of load on the output, so I've put some really long sticks on the back so we've got some hope of actually fixing it down to the bench so it doesn't just tip over. And I've made a controller which is basically just going to be a speed controller out of an Arduino Uno and a BTS7960 motor driver that should be more than enough current. In the previous project, which was the transformer, I added encoders to all of the axes so I could turn all of those geared motors with their 3D printed gearboxes into servos. Eventually I will do that with this project, but for now we're just going to have a speed controller and nothing else. So I've got two direction switches I can switch to make it go in either direction, and if they're both on or both off then it stops, and I've got a knob I can turn which basically controls the PWM going into that motor driver so I can vary the velocity, and that means I can control it quite nicely, give it a bit of power and see how it's going. So it seems to be running perfectly well, all of the gears turn in the right direction, and all of the gears mesh, and that's looking really good. Full speed seems more than fast enough for my purposes, I really only need to lift the leg off the ground by moving the gearbox about 10 or 20 degrees. Right, I've got this clamp to the table with some clamps on the back and a bit of wood. I think at some point though, yeah, the table's going to tip over, so I'm probably going to have to sit on the back here. But for now, we can operate this. I've got the speed control. And we're going to try and deadlift some mass. So obviously we've only got half a metre, so basically anything we put on here will be half the newton meters of torque we'd have at one meter. So we're going to start with a 12 kilogram kettlebell, which is pretty much the most the cycloidal drive could do, albeit at twice the distance. So it should handle this with no problems. Right, let's see what happens. I'm just going to turn up the volume as it were. Gradually. Yep, the table's already tipping over. I'm just going to hold the back down. Yep, and as you'd imagine, no problems there whatsoever. Right, let's see how that goes. I'm going to have to sit on the back of the table, so probably put my whole weight up here. 
and hold this from tipping over. Let's see what happens. So that's lifting and it's on hardly any power. It's not even full speed. Yeah, absolutely no problems there either. So that's good. Okay, so I've gone up to a lot more. We've got two eight kilogram kettlebells and two 12s. So altogether, we've got 40 kilograms at half a meter. Oh, there's that table tipping over again. Well, that seems to be no problem as well. Let's put that down again. I can hear the gearbox laboring slightly, but I'm really only running this on half speed. If I turn it right up, oh, there we go. That's as fast as it will go at full speed. So yeah, that's uh, really straining quite a lot. That's probably the practical limit, I'd say, because it's not going anywhere near where it was at full speed. That is quite a lot of mass. Obviously a lot faster on the downstroke. And those gears seem intact, so let's just move this up again. They all just seem to be running fine. Can't really see any issues with them at all. Not even any burrs on them. The keys have stayed in the keyways on those little gears and the plastic's intact and the intermediate gears are still in one piece, so all good. So it looks like we were approaching the maximum power of these motors because they were slowing right down. We probably could have stalled it and the gearbox would have stayed in one piece. That means those plastic gears are more than strong enough for the powers of the motors. And we can only really make it more powerful by putting more motors in or more powerful motors. But we lifted 40 kilograms of mass at half a meter. And that means right off the end here at one meter, that would have been 20 kilograms. And that's 200 Newton meters of torque. So if we compare that to something like an RC servo, that's maybe 20 kilogram centimeters, then that would be 100 times stronger than that at 2,000 kilogram centimeters. So quite a lot of power there. We did all the testing at half a meter, but actually the knee joint, as I said before, is only at 300 millimeters, which is just over half. So actually there we'd be able to lift twice as much force or twice as much torque. So we probably would have been able to lift 80 kilograms and that's spread between at least two legs in the machine. So that means we can lift 160 kilograms. And that's more than enough to lift me and lift the rest of the machine. And also we don't have to lift it really. We just need to hold the legs down while the other two lift up. So that's more than enough force. It's going to come out quite wide, so I don't know if I want to ride it like this, sitting on it like a horse, or just comfortably sideways like this and have it go this way. But I think what I'd like is to actually lie on it like this and then have sensors that measure my arms and actually make it walk by moving my arms like this and turning like this. But that's coming up in the future, so don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see the next part, which is going to be building the whole mechanical assembly.